Hello students, welcome back to Career Power Hyderabad, powered by Adda 24-7. So students, this video is weekly section-wise revision. So we'll discuss the entire week-long current affairs in the form of MCQs. So please watch this entire video, very useful for your upcoming bank SSC RRB examinations. So before going into the video, please subscribe our YouTube channel, like and share our videos, join the Telegram channel, download the Career Power Hyderabad app. We'll provide the links in the description as well as comment section. Every Monday, we have fresh batches for Bank SSC RRB as well as for SI Constable. Do contact the branches or you can visit the uh, branch or you can call the number for further details. The numbers are on the screen. So, the first section for today is National News. So, let us see the first question in National News. So, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he recently inaugurated the Savra Kudu uh, hydropower project in which of the following state. So, this project was launched in the state of Himachal Pradesh. So, PM Narendra Modi, he launched this uh, uh, total hydro uh, four hydropower projects uh, with a total cost of 11,000 crores uh, in Mandi in Himachal Pradesh. So this particular Savra project was launched at a cost of 2,080 crores. Okay, so it is a 11, 111 megawatt project, and also he laid the foundation stone for Renukaji Dam project with a, a total cost of 7,000 crores and with a megawatt of 40 megawatt project. Also he launched uh, the Luhri Stage One and Dola Sindh. Uh, hydropower projects. Uh, it is the first project in the Hamirpur district. So, these are the projects launched by PM Modi in the state of Himachal Pradesh. So, Himachal Pradesh Governor Rajendra Alekar, Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. So, PM Modi, he launched a blockchain based digital degrees at which IIT? So, blockchain based digital degrees were launched at IIT Kanpur. So, PM Modi, he inaugurated this uh, blockchain based digital degrees at the 54th Convocation Ceremony at IIT Kanpur. So, these digital degrees can be verified globally and they are unforgeable, you can't uh, forge them. So, using blockchain, blockchain technology which was developed in-house, so IIT Kanpur has brought this digital degrees, okay. So, next question, again about PM Modi. So, PM Modi inaugurated 356 kilometer long Bina refinery from Madhya Pradesh to uh, the Panki terminal at Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. So, it is a multi product pipeline project with a cost, it was developed at a cost of 1524 crores. So, with a cost of 1524 crores, this multi product pipeline was developed and launched by PM Modi at Uttar Pradesh. So, this has a capacity of 45 million metric tons per annum and it was built at a cost of, as you know, 1524 crores. It will provide safe, safe and efficient evacuation of products from the Bina refinery in Madhya Pradesh. To the availability of products in various regions like the Eastern UP, Central UP, North Bihar and South Uttarakhand. Okay. So, he also inaugurated Kanpur Metro Rail project. He travelled from IIT Metro Station to Geetanagar. This project was developed at a cost of 11,000 crores. It is a total 32 kilometer long project in Kanpur city. So, these are held in UP. So, UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, Governor Anand Bin Patel. So, let us see international news. So, which country has launched Inmarsat 6 F1, it is a communication satellite using Mitsubishi Heavy Industries rocket. So, this satellite, Inmarsat communication satellite was launched by Japan. So, Japan has launched this Inmarsat satellite. This satellite is uh, developed by a London based company. It is a next generation broad broadband service satellite. So, that the satellite weight is nearly 5470 kilos. It has a dual payload uh, featuring L band and KA band. Okay. So, it is the world's largest and most sophisticated commercial satellite launch at till date and this is the, this particular Mitsubishi uh, heavy industries uh, rocket was used to launch this particular satellite. So, it is launched by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency which was established in 2003, headquarters is in Tokyo, Japan. So, which nation launched Xiong 102E which is a 5 meter optical satellite? So, which country launched this 5 meter optical satellite? It was launched by China. So, China launched a Xiong uh, 02E which is a 5 meter resolution uh, satellite with a camera was launched by the Chinese National Space Administration. So, this was launched using Long March 4C rocket which is very popular in China. Okay. So, this was launched in China. And this particular uh, satellite is just uh, 2.5 kgs. It is, a, uh, it is with uh, the infrared, near infrared and hyperspectral cameras. So, these cameras can take uh, images of the earth. 
So this is the advantage of this particular Chinese satellite. So this will provide uh, the engineers with uh, the ge ge geological ca condition and search for minerals and also other uses like transportation, agriculture and disaster mitigations. So China National Space Administration established 1993 headquarters is in Beijing. So next, uh, uh, this particular Prime Minister, Prime Minister Mohammad Hussein Robel. So he was suspended. He belongs to which country? So Prime Minister Mohammad Hussein Robel belongs to Somalia. So Somalia President Farmazo, he suspended the Prime Minister who is having allegations of theft of land. So that is why Farmazo, the President Farmazo removed uh, Prime Minister Robel. Okay. So uh, let us discuss uh, about Somalia's capital, Somalia's capital, Mogadishu. Currency is shilling. This is the flag of Somalia. And here is the country of Somalia, surrounded by Djibouti, Ethiopia and all these countries. And very far from India, it's an African uh, continent. Somalia is an African continent, which is part of the Horn of Africa. So uh, quite far from India. So this is about Somalia. So next term, this country has introduced minibus lookalike, world's first uh, dual mode vehicle that can run both on rail, road and rail, on tracks and uh, as well as roads. So this was launched by Japan. So Japan launched this dual mode vehicle. Okay. So this dual mode vehicle was launched in the town of Kayo. So this can run on normal rubber drives and also can run on steel wheels. It can carry 21 passengers. It will run at a speed of 60 kilometers in rail and 100 kilometers on road. Okay. So this particular uh, concept was launched in the coast of Shikoku Island in the southern Japan, which has a popular uh, sea, uh, seaside scenery. Okay. So Japan capital Tokyo, currency is Japanese yen. This is the flag of Japan. So Japanese Prime Minister recently appointed, so remember, Fumo Kishida, Emperor is Noruhito. So please remember, very, very important. So uh, this is the map of Japan. Uh, here is Japan, which is uh, near to North Korea, South Korea and Russia. So very far from India, Japan is in the east side. Okay. So next term, which country has, uh, has been added as the fourth new member of BRICS New Development Bank? So the fourth new member of BRICS New Development Bank is Egypt. So Egypt was added as the fourth new member. So in September, Bangladesh, United Arab Emirates and Uruguay joined the New Development Bank. And now this month, Egypt, develop, Egypt joined the New Development Bank. Okay. So this New Development Bank was established by the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa nations. Okay. The main aim of the bank is to mobilize resources for infrastructure sustainable development project in the BRICS nations as well as other emerging market economies and developing economies. So BRICS Bank or New Development Bank established 2014 headquarters is in Shanghai. President is Marcos Prado. Okay. So now we'll see state news. So with state government has launched a chief minister dashboard monitoring system. So chief minister dashboard monitoring system was launched by the Tamil Nadu state. So Tamil Nadu state has brought up this uh, CM dashboard Tamil Nadu 360 in Chennai. So with this, CM can track all the welfare schemes, including the implementation of the schemes, fund allocation, number of beneficiaries, storage of water in dams, rainfall patterns, all these things he can get from this particular dashboard. So CM of Tamil Nadu, MK Stalin, Governor of Tamil Nadu, RN Ravi recently appointed. So please remember, very, very important. Okay. So World Sangeet Tansen Festival was celebrated in which state? So this was celebrated in the state of Madhya Pradesh, in the city of Gwalior. So the 97th edition of World Sangeet Tansen Festival was held in Gwalior between December 25th to December 30th. Okay. So this uh, in this festival, artists from India as well as abroad have participated in this music festival. So total nine concerts were uh, happened uh, as a part of this festival. So it happened in Madhya Pradesh. So Madhya Pradesh Governor Mangu Bai Si Patel, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan. So this state Chief Minister has launched a Meenam Manjampai scheme to promote the usage of cloth bags instead of plastic bags. So Meenam Manjampai scheme was launched by the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister. So Tamil Nadu Chief Minister MK Stalin has brought up this scheme. So this is mainly to promote the cloth bags. Manjampai means a yellow cloth bag. You can see in the picture where the Chief Minister is carrying this yellow cloth bag. So in Tamil, Manjampai means yellow cloth bag. So mainly to avoid plastic, to promote uh, uh, cloth bags, Chief Minister has launched this particular scheme. So Tamil Nadu CM, you know, MK Stalin, Governor RN Ravi. Okay. So next, uh, who will head the five member committee to look into the withdrawal of Armored Forces Special Powers Act in Nagaland? So who will be the head of the committee for uh, reviewing the withdrawal of Armored Forces Special Powers Act in Nagaland? The answer is Vivek Joshi. 
So Register General and Census Commissioner of India Vivek Joshi will head this committee. He will submit the report within 45 days to the central government. So central government has appointed this committee to look into the demand for withdrawal of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in Nagaland. So Nagaland Chief Minister Nephew Roy, Governor is Jagdish Mukhi. Let us discuss what is this Armed Forces Special Powers Act which came up in 1958. So this act is mainly uh, introduced because there was a lot of increasing violence in the northeastern states. So in order to maintain a public order in these disturbed areas, so armed forces are given special power. They can prohibit gathering of five or more persons. They can use force or even open fire uh, if the persons are not willing to listen them. They can arrest a person without a warrant, enter and search premises without a warrant and they can ban the possession of firearms. So this is the power of Armed Forces Special Powers Act. But uh, there were uh, situations of misuse of this act. So that is why Nagaland public is asking to remove this act. Okay. So a committee was appointed by the central government to review it and the head of the committee is Vivek Joshi. So this state chief minister has launched a Kaushal Rojgar Nigam portal. Kaushal Rojgar Nigam portal was launched by the Haryana chief minister Manohar Lal. So Haryana Kaushal Rojgar Nigam. So this particular scheme is mainly to deploy contract man force and outsource man force in various government departments to provide jobs on contract basis. Okay. So that is why a web portal was launched by the chief minister. Chief minister also announced to set up Atal Park and Smriti Kendra on the eve of good governance day on December 25th. Okay. He honored 75 officers and employees. He launched the magazine Vyavastha Parivartan and also the official calendar of Haryana state. So Haryana governor Bandaru Dattatreya, chief minister Manohar Lal. So please remember very very important. So Karnataka uh, government has partnered with NPCA and which bank to implement E rupee. So Karnataka government has partnered with State Bank of India and National Payments Corporation of India to implement the E rupee. So Karnataka government will provide E rupee vouchers, prepaid vouchers to the students. Students can use these vouchers to pay their college fees. So that is a simple scheme of Karnataka government launched with the help of NPCA and State Bank of India. So this E rupee is a cashless and contactless payment which will enable uh, the uh, and ensure leak proof delivery transactions. So Karnataka CM Baswaraj Bombay, Governor Tawa Chand Gehlot. Okay. So NPCA established 2008 headquarters is in Mumbai. SBA established 1955 headquarters is in Mumbai. Chairman Dinesh Kumar Kara tagline Suraksha Aur Barosa Dhonu. So now we'll see appointments. We have huge appointments this week, uh, nearly almost 15 appointments. So let us see all the appointments quickly. So who is appointed as the co-chair of Finance Industry Development Council? So the co-chair of Finance Industry Development Council is Kamlesh Gandhi. So Kamlesh Gandhi along with Umesh Revankar were appointed as the co-chairs. Dinanak was appointed as the additional director of this Finance Industry Development Council. Okay. So this Finance Industry Development Council is a self-regulatory organization come representative body of the non-banking finance companies in India which are registered with the RBI. It was established in 2004, headquarters is in Mumbai. So who was appointed as the President of International Automobile Federation who organized the F1 races. So the President of this organization is Mohammed bin Salayam. So Mohammed bin Salayam of United Arab Emirates was appointed as the first non-European president of the International Automobile Federation. So which was established in 1904, headquartered in Paris. So it organizes open wheel racing cars competition, which is simply called the F1 race. So recently who won the F1 title? Max Verstappen won the F1 title. Mercedes won the Constructs champion title. Verstappen won the driver's champion title. Okay. So last week only we discussed. So please remember very, very important. So who was appointed as the managing director of RBL Bank earlier called the Ratnakar Bank. So Rajiv Ahuja is the interim head of the uh, RBL Bank okay? because Vishwaveer Ahuja is going on a leave. So that is why Raju Ahuja was made the interim MD CEO of RBL Bank. So RBL Bank established 1943 headquarters is in Mumbai tagline Apnonka Bank. Remember tagline is very very important. So this Indian origin judge. Narendran Kolappan was appointed to the highest judicial bench, the constitutional bench in which country? So he was appointed to the highest constitutional bench in South Africa. So Indian origin Narendran Kolappan and uh, Ramaka Stephen Matopo. So both of them were appointed to the constitutional court by the president of South Africa, Cyril Ramposa. 
So both will take charge on January 1st. The constitutional court is the high court that deals primarily with the constitutional law. So the main authority, its main authority is to rule on whether laws that are challenged are in, are in, are in fact unconstitutional. I mean very simple to say. So if the laws made by the government are unconstitutional with the, uh, the law of the land, this court will declare it null and void. So if anything is violating the constitution, this court will declare them as uh, illegal, as null and void. So that is the purpose of constitutional court. Okay. South Africa currency, RAM, capital, they have three capitals, Pretoria uh, which is administrative, Cape Town is legislative and Blomfontein is judiciary capital. This is the flag of uh, uh, South Africa. South Africa is in far south of uh, the African continent, very far from India. Okay. So next, uh, um, this particular motor company has appointed Ashin Chihana as their new chairman. So Ashin Chihana is the new chairman of which uh, company? The answer is Amaha Motor. So Amaha Motor India Limited appointed their uh, head chairman as Eshin Chihana. So Chihana joined the company in 1991. Yamaha was established in 1955. It is headquartered in Japan in the Shizuoka uh, city. Okay. So uh, Eshin Chihana, is, he has a lot of experience in the field of automobiles and also mainly in the company of Yamaha. So his appointment is very critical for India. Okay. I mean Indian Yamaha group. So, who will replace Malikarjun Rao as the MD CEO of Punjab National Bank? The new MD CEO of Punjab National Bank is Atul Kumar Goel. So, Atul Kumar Goel is the MD CEO of Punjab National Bank. Soma Sankar Prasad is the MD CEO of Yuko Bank. So, please remember Atul Kumar Goel for Punjab and Som Sankar Prasad for Yuko Bank. So, Punjab National Bank established 19, uh, 1894, headquarters is in Mumbai, tagline the name you can bank upon. Yuko Bank established 1943, headquarters is in Kolkata, tagline is honors your trust. Okay. So, you know, Yuko Bank new CEO, you know the answer we already discussed. The answer is Soma Sankar Prasad. Soma Sankar Prasad is the new MD and CEO of Yuko Bank. Okay. So, who was appointed as the Director General CEO of Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs? The new CEO Director General of Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs is Premin Kumar. So, he is an IAS officer. He is appointed as the head of this uh, organization, this institution, the Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs, which is a central service training institute under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. They train the civil servants belonging to the Indian Corporate Law Service CADA. Okay. So, this was this institute was established in 2008. It is present in Maneshwar in Haryana. So, they deal with various subjects, matters and affairs in the arena and spectrum of corporate affairs regulation, governance and policy. Okay. So, Vivek Mishri was recently appointed as, so Vivek Mishri is very popular in news, Vivek Mishri was appointed as the Deputy National Security Advisor. So Vivek Mishri who was earlier the ambassador to China, who has a lot of experience uh, working in China, he was now appointed as the Deputy National Security Advisor. Okay. So currently we have Rajendra Khanna, Pankaj Saran and Dathatraya as uh, NSS, Deputy NSS. So Vivek Mishri will join this team to be the Deputy NSA and recently to China, Pradeep Kumar Rawat was appointed as the new ambassador to China. So please remember very, very important personality who was appointed as the Director General of Forest and Special Secretary in the Ministry of Environment. So the answer is Chandra Prakash Goel or CP Goel. CP Goel was appointed as the Director General of Forest, uh, Ministry of Environment. Okay. So please remember very, very important. The indo tibetan Border Police Director General is now holding the additional charge of Sahastra Seema Bal. So, who is the DG of uh, indo tibetan Border Police? The answer is Sanjay Arora, who will be now the additional D, uh, Director General of Sahastra Seema Bal. Okay. So, wh what is Sahastra Seema Bal? It is mainly the uh, guarding force on Indo-Nepal and in Indo-Bhutan borders. Okay. Sahastra Seema Bal, which is part of the Ministry of uh, Home Affairs. It's part of the Central Armored Police Forces along with six other forces. It was established in 1963 after the Chinese aggression and it's headquartered in New Delhi, Moto A Service Security Brotherhood. So the indo tibetan Border Police DG Sanjay Arora is the head of uh, SSB. So now let us discuss about indo tibetan Border Police established in 1962, headquarters is in New Delhi, Moto, Valor, Stiffordness and Commitment. So, newly appointed MD CEO of Equitas Small Finance Bank. I mean, he is reappointed. So, reappointed MD CEO of Equitas Small Finance Bank, Vasudevan PN. So, Vasudevan is already the MD CEO. He is again reappointed for a term of three years. Okay. 
So let us discuss about Equator Small Finance Bank established 2016, headquarters is in Chennai. Tagline, it's fun banking. So please uh, check out all these uh, appointments, very, very important. The new brand ambassadors of Easy My Trip online uh, booking uh, website, travel company. So Easy My Trip new brand ambassadors are Vizeras and Varun Sharma. Both A and B is the answer. Both Vizeras and Varun Sharma, you can see in the picture there, okay, explaining something about Easy My Trip. They were appointed as the brand ambassadors of this company. So this company was established in 2008 by Nishant, Rikant and Prashant brothers. Okay. It is headquartered in New Delhi. They mainly provide hotel bookings, air ticket bookings, ho holiday packages, bus bookings and white label services. Okay. So Easy My Trip brand ambassador Vijay Raj and Varun Sharma. Who was appointed as India's next representative to UN conference on disarmament in Geneva. So next ambassador to... Uh, representative to UN conference on uh, disarmament is Anupam Ray. Anupam Ray, senior diplomat, is now appointed as the ambassador. I mean, representative to India's representative to the United Nations conference on disarmament in Geneva. Okay, so this conference is mainly to negotiate arms control and disarmament agreements, which is based in Geneva. They meet in three separate sessions. This was established in uh, 1979. As a committee on disarmament, later renamed to conference on disarmament in 1984. Okay, so let us see important uh, schemes, just one scheme, uh, schemes and committees. So, which of the following regulator has recently inducted Aruti Krishnan as the member of mutual fund advisory panel? So, the answer is SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. They have appointed Aruti Krishnan as the member of mutual fund advisory panel. Okay, so this panel is headed by Usha Turath. Who is a deputy uh, governor of uh, RBI? Uh, yeah, I mean, former uh, deputy governor of RBI. So this committee advises SEBI on matters related to mutual fund regulation to ensure the protection development of industry and also disclosure requirements. So they will suggest uh, measures required to taken to render the legal framework for mutual funds to be transparent and simple for investors and the constituents. So the committee has total 24 members, and Arati Krishnan is one of them. So, SEBI established in 1988, given statutory status in 1992, headquarters is in Mumbai and the chairman is Ajay Tyagi. Okay. Let us see summits and conferences. There is just one. Who will chair the counter-terrorism committee in January 2022? So, the chairman of counter-terrorism committee in January 2022 is India itself. So, India resumed the charge of the counter-terrorism committee after 10 years. So, in January 2022, they will be head of this uh, committee. So, this committee was established by a Security Council Resolution 1373 in 2001 after the 9-11 attacks. So, this committee will monitor the implementation of Resolution 1973, so which will uh, enhance okay, legal and constitutional ability to counter terrorist activities at home and also at abroad. So, what is this uh, Resolution 1373? So, this is mainly to criminalize the financing of terrorism, freeze any funds related to persons involved in terrorism, Denying all forms of financial support to terrorist groups, suppressing safe hands, support for terrorists, sharing information with governments regarding any groups which are practicing or planning terrorist attacks. You can also investigate, detect, uh, arrest, extradict, prosecute uh, those involved in terrorist act, criminalize both active and passive assistance for terrorism. So this is about uh, the resolution which is given by the United Nations Security Council which has the authority to issue binding resolutions for member states. It has total 15 members, headquartered in New Delhi, founded in 1945. Okay, And the India's permanent representative to UN is S. Thirumurthy. So please remember all these points. So let us see awards, very, very important. So this bank, along with Bayana Network, was given the most effective bank fintech partnership award. So most effective bank fintech partnership award was given to Federal Bank and Vayana Network. So, Federal Bank and Vayana Network were given the most effective bank fintech partnership agile and adaptable at the IBSA Global Fintech Innovation Awards 2021. So, for providing seamless uh, experience to its customers, so both the bank and network were given award by the IBS in Intelligence. It's a, a research uh, body which is based in London, had uh, established in 1991. They have provided this award. Okay. Let us discuss about Fed Bank, which was established in 1931. Headquarters is in Oliva, Caroline, your poor Fed banking partner. Vayana Network, established in 2016. Headquarters is in Bengaluru. So, who among the following has won the 
Sushila Devi Award 2021 for Best Book of Fiction by an Women Author. So, who won this Sushila Devi Award? The answer is Anukriti Upadhyaya. So, for her book Kinzugi, she won the award, Best Book of Fiction Award for her novel Kinzugi. So, Anukriti Upadhyaya have won the Sushila Devi Award. So, this award is given by Sri Latanlal Foundation. Okay. So, every year they present this award and this year Anukriti Upadhyaya has won this award. Okay. So, who won the Global Environment and Climate Action Citizenship Award? So, Global Environment Climate Action Citizenship Award was won by Viral Sudhirbhai Desai. Viral Sudhirbhai Desai has won the uh, Global Environment and Climate Action Citizen Award 2021. So, Viral Desai is very popularly called the Green Man of Gujarat. Okay. Among the 28 personalities, he is the only Indian to win this award. Okay. So, these awards are given by the Harvard Medical School Center for Health and Global Environment. So, these awards are given to persons who are working to restore and protect uh, the global environment. Okay. So, which bank has won the most uh, innovative best practice at the Confederation of Indian Industries Digital Transformation Award 2021? So, this bank has won the most innovative best practice award. It is HDFC Bank. HDFC Bank has won this award for providing world class financial inclusion in village level centers along with the government's common service centers. Okay. So, Confederation of Indian Industry which was established in 1895 headquarters is in New Delhi. It mainly works uh, to create and sustain an environment conducive to the development of India through industry, through government, through civil society by advisory and consultative process. Okay. So, HDFC Bank won the award. So, it was established in 1994 headquarters is in Mumbai. Tagline, we understand your world. Okay. So, who was named the PETA's India's 2021 Person of the Year? So, PETA India 2021 Person of the Year is Alia Bhatt. So, popular Bollywood star Alia Bhatt was made the 2021 Person of the Year by People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, PETA India. Okay. So, this PETA was uh, founded in 1980 in uh, America, in Norfolk, in Virginia State. So, their slogan is, animals are not ours to experiment on eat, wear, use of entertainment or abuse in any other way. So, PETA India established 2000 headquarters is in Mumbai. Okay. So, which of the following bagged the National Breed Conservation Award for 2021? So, National Breed Conservation Award went to the Kerala Veterinary and Animal Science University. So, Kerala Veterinary and Animal Science University has won the National Breed Conservation Award for 2021. So, this award was given by the Indian Council for Agriculture Research along with the National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources. So, this award is mainly given for their contribution and improvement of registered Indian breeds of domestic livestock and poultry. So, the award contains a citation and a cash prize of 10,000. So, this award is mainly given for protecting the breed of Telchari which is a chicken which is a native chicken breed of the Kerala state. So, this conservation process was started in 2014. So, through scientific selection and management, now the breed is laying eggs as early as in 5 months and the average egg production is now 160 to 170 eggs. Okay. So, Karnataka, sorry, Kerala Veterinary uh, University has won this particular National Breed Conservation Award. Okay. So, now we will see banking news. Okay. RBI extended tokenization deadline to which date? So, it is up to 30 June 2022. The tokenization deadline was increased by RBI. Okay. The earlier deadline was just December 31st, 2021. Extended 6 more months to June 30, 2022. So, according to RBI, RBI issued guidelines for regulate uh, the regulation of payment aggregators and payment gateways, prohibiting these people to store customer card credentials within their database. So, they can't uh, show, st store the customer uh, card credentials. They need to replace it, it with a token number. Okay. So, tokenization means it is an alternate to storing card details with merchants. Instead of saving the card details because they can misuse, you need to store a token number. Okay. So, RBI established 1935, headquarters is in Mumbai, Governor is Shakti Kanta Das. The next question, which uh, payments bank has partnered with MoneyPay to enable international fund transfer? The answer is Paytm Payments Bank. So, Paytm Payments Bank and MoneyGram, sorry, Paytm Payments Bank and MoneyGram. So, they are now partnering to enable international fund transfer directly to the Paytm wallet. Okay. So, MoneyGram is nearly doing 50% of transactions in India. So, that is why 
uh, these people have partnered with MoneyGram, the Paytm people. Now you can directly send money to Paytm wallet from anywhere outside the world. Okay, I mean outside India. So MoneyGram is an American company established in 1980, headquarters is in Dallas in the Texas state USA. So the chairman of Paytm Payments Bank, Vijay Shekhar Sharma, MD CEO Satish Kumar Gupta, Paytm Payment Bank established 2015, headquarters is in Noida, UP. So RBI has imposed how much monetary penalty on these two payment uh, operators, Mobiquick and Spice Money for violation of norms. So RBI has imposed a 1 crore penalty on both of these people. So 1 crore on each Mobiquick and Spice Money for violating norms uh, according to section 26 of the Payment and Settlement Systems Act. Okay. So Mobiquick was established 2009, headquarters is in Gurugram. Spice Money established 2000 headquarters is in Noida. Okay, so which bank has signed? A, sorry, which insurance company has signed bank assurance pact with a South Indian Bank? So HDFC Life has signed a bank assurance agreement with South Indian Bank. So with this bank assurance pact, now uh, the HDFC Life will provide all its products to the customers of South Indian Bank. So South Indian Bank customers they can uh, purchase the Insurance products given by the HDFC Life. Okay. South Indian Bank established 1929, headquarters is in Trishur, Kerala, tagline experience next generation banking. HDFC Life established 2000, headquarters is in Mumbai. Okay. So, which bank partnered with NPCA to offer cross border remittances using UPI? So, the answer is Indus in the bank. Indus in the bank is partnered with NPCA to provide cross border remittances using UPI IDs. So, it is the first bank to go live on UPI for cross border payments. Okay. So, Indus Sindh Bank was established in 1994, headquarters is in Mumbai. Tagline We care, they will say, we make you feel richer. So, NPCA, you know, we already discussed, established in 2008, headquarters is in Mumbai. So, next question same answer. So, this bank has announced green fixed deposits. Again, the answer is Indus Sindh Bank. So, Indus Sindh Bank brought out green fixed deposits. So, the money you invest in this green uh, fixed deposits will be used uh, only to provide loans to green projects. Okay. So, green deposit is a fixed term deposit mainly to support environmental friendly projects. Okay. So, bank will provide only money from these deposits to loans from these deposits to environment friendly funders, projects. We already discussed about Indus in the bank. Okay. So, now let us see about access bank. So, Axis Bank is second largest in the point of sale machines. What is the what is the full form of POS? So, POS means point of sale machines. So, Axis Bank is the second largest having installed nearly 2 lakh uh, card swiping machines in this year. It is a part, part of Axis One strategy. The number of devices have increased uh, to 16 percent in October. HDFC dominates this field. HDFC is top, second is Axis, third is SBI and fourth is ICICI. So, Axis established 1993, headquarters is in Mumbai, tagline, Bharti Kanam Zindagi. Okay. So, which bank will acquire 9.95 percent stake in India International Clearing Corporation Limited? So, this bank will acquire 9.95 percent stake in India International Clearing Corporation Limited. The answer is State Bank of India. So, State Bank of India will acquire 9.95 percent, which uh, equals to 34 crores. So, this uh, India International Clearing Corporation, it is the first uh, Clearing Corporation set up in 2016 at Gift City in Gujarat. So, what is Clearing House? So, Clearing House is an intermediary between buyer and seller. Okay. So, Clearing House will validate and finalize the transaction between buyer and seller in the finance market. So, this is Clearing House. So, SBI established 1955, headquarters is in Mumbai, Chairman Dinesh Kumar Kara, tagline Suraksha Aur Barosa Dono. So, let us see the agreement news. So, Indi Paisa has signed a partnership agreement with this pay payment bank to launch a fintech solutions targeting the small and medium enterprise sector. So, Indi Paisa has launched uh, this uh, fintech platform along with NSDL Payments Bank. So, NSDL Payments Bank and Indi Paisa have launched uh, financial technology solutions for the 63 million small and mid-sized enterprise sector in India. So, they will empower the owners and operators to check charge of their finances, give them facilities and services that help them grow their business, comply with government tax laws and build a better future for their families. 
So uh, NSDL Payments Bank established 2016, headquarters is in Mumbai. Indipas established 2013, headquarters is in Noida. Okay. So which bank has signed MOU with India Post Payment Bank to offer banking services in semi-urban rural areas? So this bank has partnered with India Post Payment Bank to offer services in semi-urban and rural areas. The answer is HDFC Bank. So HDFC Bank and India Post Payment Bank. Now they will offer services to nearly 4.7 crore customers of the payment bank in semi-urban and rural areas. So out of this 4.7 crores, 90% reside in rural areas. Okay. So this will enable the HDFC to boost their financial inclusion drive using the India Post Payment Bank network of 650 branches and 1,36,000 banking access points. Okay. So India Post Payment Bank established 2018 headquarters is in Mumbai. Tagline, Apka Bank, Apki Dwara. HDFC Bank established 1994 headquarters Mumbai. Tagline, we understand your world. Okay. So let us see defense news. Which of the following has launched a contemporary messaging application called A Sigma? So A Sigma was launched by Indian Army. So Indian Army has brought this A Sigma. It's abbreviated as Army Secure Indigenous Messaging Application. It's a new generation web-based application developed by the Corps of Signals of Army. So the, it will replace, it will be an alternate to the Army Wide Area Network, which is working for the Army since 15 years. So this application is designed to meet all the futuristic requirements and enhance the user experience. They have a lot of contemporary features and it provides real-time data transfer and messaging requirements of the army. It will meet all these things. So a Sigma is a part of Make in India initiative. So Chief of Army, Manoj Kumar Narwane, Manoj Mukund Narwane or MM Narwane. Vice Chief is Chandi Prasad Mohanty. So please remember, very, very important. So name the first... Uh, indigenously built uh, missile covert of the Indian Navy ship that was uh, decommissioned after 32 years of service at Vishapatnam. This covert first in indigenously developed in India is now decommissioned. It's retired. The answer is INS Kukri. So INS Kukri is the first uh, missile covert so which was uh, decommissioned at Vishapatnam. It was built by the Muslim Dock shipbuilders in uh, 1989 in Mumbai. It served both in Western and Eastern fleets. It retired recently which is called decommission. So Chief of Naval Staff, Harikumar, Vice Chief Gormade and uh, Deputy Chief Ravaneet Singh. Okay. So name the indigenously developed high speed expandable aerial target whose flight test has been successfully conducted by DRDO. So this high speed expandable aerial target is named as Abhyas. Okay. So the answer is Abhyas. So Abhyas is the high speed expandable aerial target which was successfully tested at Chandipur in Odisha. This was developed by the Aeronautical Development Establishment Lab. It's a DRDO lab of uh, the DR, uh, it's a DRDO lab. Okay. So this Abhyas, it's a demo flight. So this demo flight will be used to uh, test our missiles. So first initially we'll send this Abhyas flight. Then we'll test all the missiles on this flight. So whether the missiles are exactly hitting the target or not, uh, whether they're destroying the target or not, all these things will be uh, done using this Abhyas demo flights. So it's a fully autonomous flight. It has a ground control station, laptop based ground control station. It runs uh, by a gas turbine engine. It has a long endurance. Uh, it can sustain a long endurance flight at subsonic speeds. So this is developed by DRDO. So DRDO established 1958. Headquarters is, is in New Delhi. Chairman is Shatish Reddy. So Indian Army has established quantum lab at the Military College of Telecommunication Engineering. This is present in which city? So it is present in the city of Indore. In the city of Indore, Indian Army has launched a quantum lab at the Military College of Telecommunication Engineering. So this lab will do research in the field of quantum technology. So uh, quantum cryptography, which is the mechanism we are using today to develop secure communication. So cryptography is a study of secure communication techniques that will allow only the sender and the recipient to view the contents. Okay, This is very, very important for Indian Army. So that is why we use quantum science in this. And also we have launched artificial intelligence center in Indo. Okay. So we already discussed chief of Navy Army, Imam Narwane, Vice Chief Chandi Prasad Mohanty. Okay. So let us see ranks and reports. Okay. Just a minute. So let us see. Uh, the next category uh, ranks and reports so the first question 
So which state has topped the composite ranking in good governance index which was launched on the eve of December 25th good governance day. So which state has topped this uh, composite ranking? The answer is Gujarat. So Gujarat has topped the composite ranking in the good governance index. So this index was launched by Home Minister Amit Shah on December 25th. This index was uh, prepared by the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances. So this report uh, has uh, uh, covered uh, 10 sectors and 58 indicators. So here are all the 10 sectors, agriculture, environment, uh, citizen centric governance, public health, uh, public infra, uh, commerce and industry, HRD, judicial and security, uh, social welfare and economic governance. So in all these sectors, uh, the good governance index was taken and here is the list of uh, the top rankers in every sector and also composite ranking. So composite ranking, if you say Gujarat is in group A, in group B, Madhya Pradesh, in northeast and hilly states, in Madhya Pradesh, in union territories, Delhi is the top ranker. So please remember composite ranking, very, very important for the exams. So DRDO has selected this company for handing over the technology of border surveillance systems. So what is the answer? The answer is Paras Defense and Space Technology. So DRDO will hand over uh, the border surveillance technology to Paras Defense and Space Technology. So they, this company Paras Defense and Space Technology, they will uh, do produce in mass scale and will cater the needs of Indian Armed Forces. Okay. So border surveillance technology was developed by the instruments R&D establishment of DRDO. So this particular system will provide all weather surveillance of day and night monitoring of the border areas. So now uh, under the transfer of technology license agreement, this particular technology will be produced in mass scale by Paras Defense okay, and will cater the needs of armored forces. So Paras Defense was established in 2009 and it is headquartered in Mumbai. Okay, So this instruments research and development establishment, it's a lab of DRD was established in 1960 in Daradun. They mainly do R&D in optical and electro optical instrumentation. They develop products like the night vision devices, electro optical surveillance and fire control systems. It is developed by DRDO. So DRDO established 1958 headquarters is in New Delhi chairman is G. Satish Reddy. Okay. So this question must come in defense. I think so it by mistake came here. Now let us see about uh, the Niti Aayog's uh, fourth edition of state health index. So who won the composite larger states uh, top rank? So in composite larger states uh, top it is topped by the Kerala state. Okay. So Niti Aayog has released the fourth edition of state health index. This is uh, developed by Niti Aayog, World Bank and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So the report is titled Healthy States Progressive India. They are giving this report since 2017. So the report is mainly to nudge the states and union territories to build robust health systems and improve the service delivery. So they give ranks in three categories, larger, smaller and union territories. Let us see the composite ranking. So if you see Kerala top larger states. Mizoram topped the smaller states. Dadra Nagar Haveli topped the union territory category. Okay. So this is given by Niti Aayog. So the Niti Aayog established 2015 headquarters New Delhi chairman Narendra Modi, vice chairman Rajiv Kumar, CEO Amitabh Kant. So which state has topped the composite smaller states in the Niti Aayog state of health index? You know the answer. The answer is Mizoram. So please study the table. Very, very important. So which state has been placed first in the implementation of Shyam Prakash Mukherjee Rurban Mission. So Shyam Prakash Mukherjee Rurban Mission. Telangana topped the index. So, Telangana is effectively implementing the index. So Tamil Nadu Gujarat stood at third and second and third places. Telangana in the first place. If you see the cluster ranking, Raikal cluster of Sangareddy, Jukal cluster of Kamareddy in Telangana stood in first and second place. And Aibak cluster of Aizwal in Mizoram stood at third place. So this scheme Rurban mission was launched by the Ministry of Rural Development in 2016. This scheme is mainly to bridge the gap between rural and urban population to providing them equal facilities, technology and socio-economic development. The main objective is to stimulate local economic development, enhance basic services, create well-planned urban clusters. Okay. So according to this scheme, urban areas means a cluster of 15 to 20 villages having a population of 30 to 40 lakh. Okay. So this is about the scheme. So this uh, IIT emerged as the best institute under the centrally funded technical institutions in the ARIIA rankings. So the answer is IIT Madras. So IIT Madras topped uh, in the best institute in the centrally funded technical institution rankings. 
So, actual ranking of institutions on innovative achievements. So, in this rankings, IIT Madras topped in the centrally funded technical institutes category. In the state and deemed to universities category, Punjab University topped. In government engineering colleges, College of Engineering in Pune topped. And private university category, Kalinga Institute topped. And in most innovative private college, GHR College of Engineering in Maharashtra top. Finally, in the centrally funded institutions, not technical, just centrally funded institutes, IGNO, Indira Gandhi National Uni Open University in Delhi has topped the list. Okay. So, these rankings are given by the Ministry of Education and All India Council for Technical Education. They mainly give rank based on the improvements on startup, innovation, entrepreneur development among the students and faculty. First edition was given in 2018. This year, 1438 higher educational institutes participated in the rankings. Okay. So, now we will see science and technology news. So, NASA has launched a 10 billion world's largest space telescope. So, designed to capture the first, first glimpse of universe just shortly after Big Bang. So, this world's largest telescope, space telescope was launched by NASA. What is the name of the telescope? The answer is James Webb Space Telescope. So, James Webb Space Telescope was launched using the Arian 5 rocket from the European Spaceport uh, Space Center, the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. So, it is a 10 billion observatory. So, it will now travel a distance of 1.6 million kilometers, okay, which is four times beyond the moon. It will take a month to go there and another five months to take pictures, okay, of the entire universe or the cosmos. It is a successor of the Hubble Space Telescope, which was launched by NASA in 1960s. So, NASA partnered with European Space Agency and Canadian Space Agency to develop this 7 ton large telescope. Okay. So, it has an operational life of 10 years. So, this particular telescope will provide uh, images of the earlier galaxies believed to be formed during the early universe formation. It will probe the structures and origin of universe and our place in the universe. So, launched by NASA, NASA established 1958, headquarters is in Washington and head and administered at the head of NASA is Bill Nelson. So, next, uh, Houston based COVID-19 vaccine, Cobervax, it got the approval of Drug Control General of India. Who is our currently the Drug Control General of India? The answer is VG Somani. VG Somani is the Drug Control General of India. So, he gave approval for Cobervax, which is developed by the Texas Child Hospital and Baylor College of Medicine. Okay. So, they were given the emergency use approval by the Central Drug Standard Control Organization. So, uh, the Drug Control General of India is the head of this uh, Central Drug Standard Organization who approves and provides licenses for a specific category of drugs. So, current Director General is V.G. Somani. Okay. Let us quickly revise all the important books and authors. Kashmir, The Quest for Peace in a Troubled Land is authored by General Nirmal Chandra. So, General Nirmal Chandra has authored this Kashmir quest for peace in a troubled land. Okay. So, please remember. Next book, Turnaround Wizard, Savior of Thousands. So, this book is an autobiography of Arup Roy Choudhury. So, Arup Roy Choudhury has authored Turnaround Wizard, Savior of Thousands. So, Modi Gambit, Decoding Modi. So, Modi Gambit, Depo, Depo, uh, Decoding Modi is authored by Sanju Verma. Sanju Verma has authored this book. So, Dr. V. L. Dutt, Glimpse of Pioneer Life Journey. So, this book is authored by V. L. Indira Dutt. Dr. V. L. Dutt, Glimpse of Pioneer Life Journey is authored by V. L. Indira Dutt. So, please remember all these books. Very, very important. So, let us see sports news. Very important for all the exams. So, who bagged the bronze medal at the International Ski Federation Alpine Skiing Competition? So, the answer is Anshal Thakur. Anshal Thakur is the first uh, Indian skier to win bronze medal at the International Ski Federation Alpine Ski Competition which was held in Montenegro. She is the first Indian ski athlete to win two medals at the international event. Okay. So, earlier also she won a bronze medal uh, in the Turkey event which was held in 2018. Okay. So, let us discuss about this International Ski Federation uh, uh, World Cup. It is a premier circuit uh, for the Alpine Ski Competition which was launched in 1967 and this year it is the 56th edition which is successfully running. Let us discuss about International Ski Federation. It is a governing body of skiing and uh, snowboarding. It uh, organizes uh, alpine skiing, cross country skiing, sky jump, ski jumping, Nordic combined, freestyle skiing, snowboarding, all these events. Okay. It was established in 1924 and it is headquartered in Switzerland in the Oberhofen 
uh, to, to near Zay, a city in Switzerland. Okay, so please remember very very important. So next, uh, who won the 2021 national billiards title? 2021 national billiards title is won by none other than Pankaj Adwani. So Pankaj Adwani, it is his 11th tournament, 11th title. So he won the national billiards title, which was organized uh, by the uh, Q Sports India. It is the 88th national billiards and snooker championship. And Pankaj Adwani won the title. So this cricket team won their first ever Vijay Hazare trophy in 2021. So Vijay Hazare trophy is won by Himachal Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh for the first time they bet Tamil Nadu and won the Vijay Hazare trophy. Okay. So let us discuss about Vijay Hazare trophy. It's also known as Ranji Vande trophy. It was launched in 2002 and it was named after the legendary Indian cricketer Vijay Hazare. Tamil Nadu is the very successful team. It won the trophy five times. So, which edition of Hockey India Junior Men National Championship? Uh, so, Hockey India Junior Men National Championship was crowned by Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh won the Hockey India Junior Men National Championship. Okay. So, please uh, let us discuss about this uh, Hockey India Junior National Championship. So, this was won by Uttar Pradesh. So, this event was held in Tutukodi in Tamil Nadu. So, it was held between 16 to 25th December. UP one hour Chandigarh. And the top scorer of this uh, uh, event is uh, Sardana Tiwari of UP. So, he won the uh, champ. Uh, he, he is the top scorer. And Odisha defeated Haryana to win the third place. So, Hockey India has organized this event. Hockey India plans, directs and conducts all the activities of both men and women hockey in India. So, this particular Hockey India is... Uh, Recognized by the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. It's mainly responsible for promoting and uh, the hockey in India. It is headquartered in New Delhi and established in 2009. So, just a minute. Okay. So, let us see uh, the next question. So, who has, who has won two gold medals at the 4th Para Badminton National Championship, which was recently concluded in Bhuvaneshwar, Odisha. So, who won the total two gold medals in the recently held 4th Para Badminton National Championship in Odisha? So, please uh, tell me the answer. The answer is Nitish Kumar. So, Nitish Kumar won both in men's doubles finals as well as men's singles. So, recently the 4th Para National Badminton, uh, sorry, Badminton Championship was held in Bhuvaneshwar. World number 7, Nitish Kumar, he won two gold medals. So, this uh, badminton championship was held by the Para Sports Association of Odisha along with the government of Odisha. It's a three-day event where 500 players from across the country have participated between 24th to 26th December. So, next uh, question. World Anti-Doping Agency, they restored the aggradation of National Dope Testing Lab. So, where is the headquarters of World Anti-Doping Agency? The headquarters of World Anti-Doping Agency is present in Montreal, Canada. In the cubic uh, state of uh, Canada, you will find the headquarters of World Anti-Doping Agency. Okay. So, they gave uh, up, uh, the aggradation. They gave back the aggradation to National Dope Testing Lab, which was sus suspended in 2019, failing to compel with the global standards. So, with this, uh, uh, the National Dope Testing Lab was prohibited from carrying any anti-doping activities like analysis of urine and blood samples. Okay, so that is why we were sending our samples to Doha, uh, where uh, we have the uh, lab in Doha, so which became a lot of expensive for us. So with this, uh, our uh, testing uh, will now be very cheaper in India. Okay, so National Dope Testing Lab, so it's uh, under the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. It's mainly responsible for human sport dope testing, established in 2008, headquarters is in New Delhi. Let us discuss about WADA, which is the anti-doping anti agency which is present in Canada mainly to promote, coordinate and monitor the fight against drugs in sports. It was established in 1999, headquarters is in Montreal in the cubic state of Canada. Okay. So, who achieved the milestone of picking 100 wickets away from home in the 22 test matches? So, this particular player have recorded history by picking 100 wickets away from home. The answer is Jasmith Bumra. So, Jasmith Bumra has picked a 100 wickets uh, away from home in test matches. So, okay. So, other than Jasmith Mumra, you will have uh, Mohammed Amir of Pakistan, Michael Holding of West Indies, Jahir Khan of India, Mohammed Shami of India, Andy Roberts of in, uh, West Indies, 
who have been a players who took 100 wickets outside their home country so this particular bowler is the 11th indian bowler to claim 200 wickets in test cricket so the answer is uh, mohammad shami so mohammad shami is the indian bowler to claim 200 wickets in test cricket in 55 matches okay so he is the fifth indian pacer uh, to claim 200 wickets in uh, the test match he is the third indian fastest pacer after kapil dev who created record in 50 matches srinath in 54 matches mohammad shami created this record in 55 matches okay so here is the list of uh, indian wicket uh, takers anil kumble kapil dev ravichandra ashwin harbhajan singh jahir khan ishan sharma bs bedi chandrashekar srinath ravindra jadeja mohammad shami so this is the entire sports uh, mcqs for this week let us see obituaries so this particular nobel peace laureate anti apartheid campaigner african archbishop who recently passed away so the answer is dashman tutu so dashman tutu the nobel peace prize winner so uh, south africa's uh, campaigner archbishop dashman tutu he recently passed away so he passed away at the age of 90 so he was uh, participated in the struggle against the white major minority rule so for this uh, he was given the nobel peace prize in 1984 for his non violent opposition to apartheid okay so after uh, uh, the entire movement he was uh, the chairman of truth and reconciliation commission which was set up to unearth the atrocities committed during this dark days okay so this is his history sir ray ellenworth he passed away recently he is a former test captain of which cricket team so he is a former test captain of england team so england test uh, captain uh, ray ellenworth so he passed away recently so he is also the chairman of england selectors he is an all rounder so he played a 61 tests for uh, england team he captained the team for 31 times okay so next wilson passed away recently he is popularly called the father of biodiversity father of biodiversity and he is nicknamed darwin's natural higher so at the age of 92 evo wilson he is also the former harvard university biologist and a pulitzer prize winner he passed away recently he gave the study of ants and human behavior which made him one of the most influential scientists and he prompted uh, for the action to protect the million species of on the planet okay so he is popularly called the father of bio diversity okay so janata dal rajya sabha mp and industrialist who passed away recently so the answer is mahendra prasad so mahendra prasad is a seven time rajya sabha member one time lok sabha member who is the founder of aristo pharmaceuticals he passed away recently so please remember all these obituaries let us see the miscellaneous news so just one question miscellaneous questions so this country has launched their um, nuclear powered ice breaker sibir to boost india's arctic plants via the northern sea route so this particular sibir nuclear powered ice breaker was launched by russia so russia launched this nuclear powered ice breaker called sibir so these ice breakers are mainly to keep the northern sea route open all through the year so to make easy for india to navigate in these regions and to do trade in these regions so the construction of this uh, ice breaker was uh, started in 2015 it started sea trails in 2017 now finally in 2021 it was launched into the sea so this ice breaker is 173 meters long 34 meters broad and it has a displacement capacity of 33500 tons so northern sea route if you see it is uh, in the arctic ocean region towards the north pole so it is it provides shorter route between east asia and the western european ports between east asia and the western european ports if you see using north sea route the distance between shanghai and rotterdam can be reduced by 30% and also from yokohama japan to rotterdam can be reduced by 40% so this is about this northern sea route importance so project 2220 ice breakers are developed mainly to unleash the traffic potential of the northern sea route okay so russia has a dominant position in the arctic region because arctic region has oil and gas reserves so they serve uh, the purpose for nearly centuries for russia so that much oil and gas is present in russia's arctic region so that is why this area this region is very very important strategically okay so russia capital moscow currency is ruble president vladimir putin flag of russia you can see here and russia it is north of india okay present in the asian continent So these are all the MCQs for today. So please subscribe our YouTube channel, like and share our videos, join the Telegram channel 
download the career power hyderabad app we will provide the links in the description as well as comment section below so we have offline classes every monday fresh batches will start every monday at dilshik nagar amir pet kokatpali do contact the branches or visit the branch for further details thank you students we'll meet in the next class